Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's Dr. Nancy live today on Wednesday. And I have a very special guest with me today, Linda Barton Kirch. Um, Linda is a nurse midwife um, here in the Indianapolis area. Um, I think the world of her, and she's done some amazing things with some of our patients. So I really wanted to have her on to talk about, you know, kind of women's health and um, maybe um, some advice for pregnant women. Um, our goal on these broadcasts are to um, help moms, and it all starts with pregnancy. It starts with preconception, actually, but um, yeah. from preconception to actually having the baby. And then um, some tips on how to raise your children naturally without having to run to the medicine cabinet for everything. So um, I'm going to let Linda start and just tell us a little bit about her, and um, we'll just kind of go from there. We'll just chat away. <laughs> go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you, and appreciate being on air with you, and I think the world of you as well. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, I think um, chiropractic and women's health go hand in hand in making an optimal vessel for women to have babies and for women to grow older. So um, my specialty, if you will, is um, women, um, wellness, care, as well as preconception babies, postpartum, and uh, my business is Central Indiana Nurse Midwives. Yeah, it, she and you serve like um, most of the Indianapolis area, right? Absolutely, I go within an hour radius of Indianapolis, okay. unless a client moves far away, and I go to see them as well. <laughs> yeah. She's she is so sweet that way, you know. And the and midwives are a different profession. Um, because it is, it is just a very women centered. It doesn't midwife mean um, with women, with it women. Does. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. And, it, and most of the midwives I've met are just so caring and you know just wonderful. And um, I couldn't imagine birthing with anyone else. You know, it's just right. it's a neat thing. And you go to people's homes, right? That is correct. I um, do home births with clients who are interested in that. Or I will refer if someone wants a birth center. We have a lovely birth center in town, and we have some naturally minded docs that I'm happy to um, pass on, as well as a midwifery practice in Methodist, as well as another midwife practicing right. in St. Vincent, and um, midwives work in triage at Community North. So we're spreading our wings. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. great to see them everywhere. I just met one last week from, uh, she's going to be in St. Vincent, Carmel. That's, so that's correct. That's kind of a neat thing. I That's where I had my daughter and it's kind of, I wish she was there when I was there. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I actually know her. Um, we worked together out in Danville at the uh, Hendricks Hospital, I think it was. And the, there was a midwifery group there, which is no longer um, in existence. Okay. Yeah. So, so what would you say to our moms that want to have kids? What um, advice would you give to them? Sure. Um, I think if you don't have the information about midwives, it would be good to meet one or two um, and talk about preconception, um, how to get your body ready to grow a healthy baby and to be healthy yourself during the process. Um, and that would include nutrition you know, water, supplements, being in alignment, activities and exercises that are safe, um, and how you can influence your baby as it's growing in utero. Right. So um, when they do, how would that work with um, you? Would, do they just call and, you know, do, do they come to you? Do you go to them? Well, it depends. I have gone to clients who can't, who don't have mobility to get to me. Um, but typically it's me. Um, I have offices in the area. Um, I have an office in my home. We typically meet for a consultation visit first. And then if we feel like we can work together well, then we um, we start that process. Okay. Yeah. What about um, like natural family planning? Do you do any of that? I do. Um, there are a few methods that are offered and I encourage potential or clients to um, research those and decide what's going to fit their families best. Okay. And is um, what you do um, as a midwife, is it more natural minded than say like going to an OB? 
It is. As a midwife for childbearing women, um, as well as for just well woman care, um, it's pretty much functional medicine unless it can't be, you know, and um, most of the time we can do without medication only because that is a band-aid versus a fix. You know, you might take a blood pressure, pressure med medicine, for instance, it'll lower your blood pressure, but it doesn't get to the root of why you have a high blood pressure. So we look at that. Um, I say we, meaning my practice. <laughs> it starts with who the person is and what's their nutrition like. I could ask, what did you eat last month? Or where did you get your water source? You know, things like that make a huge difference in our health. Right. So do you, um, when you do work with women, is it mostly using um, food as their medicine versus like supplements or do you do both? I think you have to start with a healthy gut before you can actually absorb what you're putting into your body. And some women actually need supplements to correct their gut flora. And we may start with supplements. We may start with food. It's a very individual process. Right. Yeah. So then besides um, working with pregnant women, you also do like women's health, right? Correct. So Correct. like I've gone to the gynecologist. Um, and then how old can you go with working with women? Until they die. I start with as young as a client needs or wants to be until they're done with their lives of being women. <laughs> <laughs> Our job. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so, like, do you see women with, like, PMS, hormone issues, too? Do you have mm -hmm. to help with that? Yeah. Yeah. And we would probably get blood work, saliva testing, whatever a woman needed to figure out what's going on in the body and work from there. Get to the root of what's happening and move from there. Right. There's no point in, oh, yeah, your hormones are um, out of whack. You need to increase this one, decrease that one. Here's a medication for it or a topical cream. You still don't know why that's happening. You know, right. it's best to know. So you are able to diagnose or not diagnose, but just really figure out what's causing the issues. Absolutely. Um, and if I'm not able to, I refer or I consult with someone who has a specialty in that area and right. go from there. Because sometimes you're looking in the forest and there's just this one tree that's a problem. And I might not specialize in that. And I definitely call on the expertise. Right. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you know, I, I think we've talked about this, that I'm really into the MTHFR gene mutation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? What's your thoughts on the folic acid folate, folate in the prenatals? Yeah, um, I really stress that women should get L-methylfolate in their <laughs> prenatals. Um, folic acid is almost not even worth having in the vitamins if a woman is um, has those genes or those markers, they can't even absorb the folic acid. So we need methylation happening in our bodies in order to utilize what we're putting into them. And if we're not, um, we're sick. We yeah. are, something is just not right, even if you can't put a finger on it. And I'd start with MTHFR. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know they started supplementing um, years ago. It was really to um, reduce the midline defects, right? The clavicular too, mm -hmm. bifida, things like that. Yes. So you know, we still see it. <laughs> well, exactly. um, so it doesn't seem to be working. But I, um, if I were to say anything while I'm talking to you to any of our women thinking about getting pregnant, please, please, please do folate. And if you don't. Um, if you don't do, you know, if you're just trying to get pregnant or um, and you're not using a supplement yet, green leafy vegetables is a great Absolutely. folate source. There's your natural source. Yeah. Yeah. So what about menopause? Yeah. Um, you know, some women have no issues with menopause. It's about 20 to 25 percent. You don't? No. no. I didn't either. <laughs> And I think, again, that's nutrition and um, what's in your body, as well as what you eat, as far as specific dietary things. Um, it's also activity and exercise. Yeah. Um, and so we talk about that. We need to talk about a history when we're looking at menopause and somebody who's really greatly suffering. Um, 
to tweak some things, make some changes, and hopefully that will stop whatever is going on in their bodies. If not, then we talk about other things, natural ways of getting to the root of it again. If you need something for pain, let's do that and then work on why. You right. Know, right. Or the heavy bleeding, or I don't have a period for three months and then I get one, you know, yeah. all these menopause yeah. things, hot sweats and flashes and all of this. Yeah. 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 There's some good resources out there too that are very helpful. And then there are um, druggists that actually customize what women need to get through the perimenopause and menopause time. Yeah, it's those sweats, I think, that gets them the most. <laughs> the yeah. moodiness can handle it. We're used to that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Their partners may be going, oh, okay. Call yeah. and say, how long is this going to last? <laughs> you know? Exactly. I think it's those night sweats that are the worst. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so do you have any more tips for the women that might be watching this? Anything that you feel in your heart that they should know that you yeah. just want to spread the word to the masses? Right, right, right. Um, take charge of your body. Um, be aware of everything you put in your mouth. Be aware of the water you drink. I recommend filtering water. And if you feel like, well, it's going to take everything out of it, you can add essentials in it you can put more minerals or whatever you need back into the water and take out everything that shouldn't be there in the first place there are your two biggest changes that will help you to be feeling better and have optimal health the next is movement and that's where you come in you know um, if somebody's got a sore back or hurting hip go see nancy and you know take care I know you love the babies and the pediatrics, you know, but, you know, I will send every breech mama to you <laughs> to hope that if you can help them or I will. That's right. <laughs> yep. That's why we're going to mm -hmm. That's it. Take care of yourself, you know. So, right. Yeah. yeah. I've said it before. Food will heal you and food will kill you. So yes. watch what you put yes. in yes yes and there's a meme out there that says you know go to your local pharmacy and it's spelled f-a-r-m-a-c-y oh, right. <laughs> yeah it's not just a fad is it it's good food is not just a fad mm -hmm. non-gmo all that stuff it's it's, it's people waking up yeah it's well and if you look at the other countries in the world they're all going with the non-gmo and they're even taking things off the market that people shouldn't be ingesting we're just a little behind in that, you know. Yeah. Um, but if anyone wants information on that, they are welcome to call me. Um, we can make an appointment. Whatever needs to be done to get to the optimal health or toward it, especially if you're thinking about getting pregnant or if you have some chronic issues. Yes. And I highly recommend Linda. She's wonderful. I put her phone number up there. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, it's 317-366-4611. And it's Linda Barton Kirch, wonderful certified nurse midwife. All righty. Thank you so much, Linda, for coming on. I so appreciate it. Um, All right. information. <laughs> and, um, we will talk to you soon. Great. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, Linda. All right.